one for coming today. We stand here, Jane Ludeman, founder of Pure R Algerian Cancer, and Tash Crosby of Talk Teach, to present to you a petition signed by thousands of New Zealanders calling for improvement in Algerian Cancer. 182 doctors. ovarian cancer and instead of receiving the necessary blood test and ultrasound she was referred to a psychiatrist and told her symptoms were psychosomatic. By the time she got her diagnosis her cancer was advanced and took her life soon after. She was 44 years old. Last year Kelly visited her doctor with typical symptoms and instead of being offered the necessary blood test she was told she had a personality disorder. By the time she could find someone to take her seriously, her tumour was three litres in size and she now faces an uncertain future. We'd love to say that these were exceptions, but the reality is we hear stories like this every single day. Whether it's in your head or you just need to lose some weight, or eat more all brand, it would be comical if it wasn't costing women's lives. In 2021, it's not uncommon for women with ovarian cancer to experience a profound sense of shame around their diagnosis. I did, because I had symptoms for a while before I told my doctor. And when I did, I wasn't taken seriously more than 10 times over two years. They thought I was a hypochondriac. I thought I was a hypochondriac. But something wasn't right. Finally, the pain became so severe and the cancer caused complications that needed emergency surgery. And the first feeling was one of relief. Crazy, that it was something real. Quickly followed by the devastation, and at 32 years old, I could now count my likely life expectancy on two hands. And then, then I thought, what bad luck! This cancer must be so rare that I'd never heard of it that my doctors had never heard of it. Until I discovered that it's our fifth most common cause of female cancer death, that it kills more women than the road toll and a bunch of other cancers that we hear so much more about. Yet no one ever told me the symptoms. My doctors didn't know the Ministry of Health and Te Aho O Te Kaha Cancer Control Agency don't even have it on their website. The survival rates are less than half that of breast and prostate cancer. But most years, the government doesn't fund any research. It's rare to see it in the news, and instead of well-funded professional charities, Fun runs, cake stalls, and ribbons in our colour everywhere. There is silence. It makes you feel like something is wrong with you. Tell me that's not shameful. I know I look the I know I look the picture of health, but I am anything but. I live my life on constant cancer treatment. I should get to spend my last years with family and friends, ticking off experiences that I thought I had an entire lifetime to do. 
instead I spend my time fighting for others because this cannot continue. We're losing too many women to this disease. So even if I feel sick and tired, I stand up for them because they're no longer here to hear their voice. And we owe it to our friends to raise awareness and funds for this disease because the outcomes are just not acceptable. I was diagnosed in 2017 and the only reason I'm standing here today is because I'm the third time getting discharged from the emergency department with a pack of Panadol. I begged for further testing and refused to leave. Women, women shouldn't have to beg for their life. about ovarian cancer, for medical guidelines, for New Zealand women to have the same treatment options as Australia, and we are calling for research because it is our least survivable women's cancer. It's time for the silence on ovarian cancer to end. It's time for GP guidelines and prompt testing. It's time to fund treatments and clinical trials. And as our least survivable women's cancer, it's time to fund research. So please accept this petition and this core heart of stories by brave women with ovarian cancer. Please don't take their words for granted. Our lives depend on you. and Tasha, I just want to say what an amazing job, how incredibly courageous it is for you both um, to stand before us today. Uh, I want to acknowledge the work you've done over a long period of time um, to raise awareness of this. And you bring a voice to the hundreds of women who have suffered silently to make sure that other women don't suffer in the same way and you are surrounded by a number of members of parliament here. Uh, some have been, like my colleague Stuart Collins and Melissa Wall, involved in the issue for many years. I proudly hosted the first time of the Sinic Logic Cancer Foundation event here in parliament. Um, we have got MPs across the house um, who are absolutely delighted to receive this petition. Um, we've heard your voice. We 
Song has given a very, very strong visual display of the unnecessary lives um, that are lost. Uh, I lost my own mother um, to cancer at 52. Uh, she died of terminal cancer and they never found the primary. Uh, and I, my reason for supporting ovarian cancer and the Gynecological Cancer Foundation is I'm convinced that she was one of those women that suffered in silence. Um, this is about the future though, and this is about making sure that we collectively, uh, as a parliament, uh, and for all of those gathered here today, uh, make sure that we save more lives, uh, and that's due to the efforts uh, that you have both put in. So thank you so much um, on behalf of my colleagues here today. I'd like to join uh, my colleague Louise Upston, who's been incredibly passionate about this co-op for many, many years, um, and actually salute to the two of you, to Jane and Harsh. Uh, you've made yourself incredibly vulnerable by sharing your stories, um, but what you do have is authenticity. You have a voice uh, that represents many in our community, and what we want actually isn't... So this will go to the Petitions Committee, and I'm glad to see that the Queen is here, who will chair that committee. But this is one of those issues that reaches right across the Parliament. You know, we want to work collaboratively together with you, and so I thank you. And I also just need to acknowledge the Honourable Claire Curran, because I know she worked with you in terms of the petition and your ability to be here today. But all I can say is kia kaha, keep going. Uh, you're an incredibly strong woman. And all we can do is pledge to listen, but also do more than that. It's to look at how more responsive our health system can be to meeting the needs of all the girls. So, here comes our place. Thank you. Oh, 